On today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to wire a four-way switch. Stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a quick disclaimer, this video is made for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. The electrical codes in my area may be different from the electrical codes in your area, so always make sure you're up to date with your current electrical codes and that you have the right permits before doing any type of electrical work. And also, if you're uncomfortable working with electricity, please, please hire a certified, qualified electrician, okay? And also, Electricity is very, very dangerous, so make sure that you always turn off the power from your circuit breaker before working with any type of electricity. And all my full disclaimer is on the description down below. With that being said, let's get to the video. You're probably asking why do we even need a four-way switch? Well, it comes very handy when you have one light fixture inside a room and you wanna control it on three different um, entrances. So like say, one is from a garage, entrance one is coming from our bedroom one is coming from our kitchen let's say you want to enter the garage and you want to turn on the light from there okay you turn on the light and then you want to go get something to eat but you don't want to leave the light on so you go to the kitchen you want to turn it off from there you got somebody coming from the bedroom and they want to turn on the light and so forth you can control the light switch on different entrances which makes it convenient so you don't have to walk all the way across the room to turn off the switch and you can also add more switches along the way with it. You don't, you're not limited to just three switches. If you wanna add more switches, you can just add more between the three-way switches on each end, adding four-way switches along the way. Okay, so you have all those options. And again, I'll show you how to wire it and all the tools that I use on the next step. Here are all the tools that we're gonna be using for this project. Start off with the key parts, which are the switches. You need two three-way switches. What I mean by three-way switch is you mean you, it means that you have one black and two travelers, okay? So the black one is called the common terminal or a com term terminal. These switches are, you know, they're the same and they don't have an on and off on the switch themselves because they can be left on top, off, bottom, off, top, on, bottom on it doesn't matter which orientation it is it all depends on how you leave it at the end they have two travelers and one common and one ground so you need two three-way switches and you need one so depending on how many rooms you want to control if you, you can have more than one four-way switch for in this project since we're only going to be controlling it in three locations we're gonna be using only one, okay? So for the four-way switch, it's a little different. You see, you have two blacks and two um, brass terminals. And you can see that there is no uh, indication on, uh, on and off position. You can see that I don't use wire nuts. I love using these Wago wire connectors. They come in various ports. So this one is a three port. They're very easy to use. I love using them. They, you just pretty much open up the lever. So insert your wire and then close it. That easy. You can reuse these. Again, all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. I love using this Volt Claw. This is one of my go-to tools. Um, there's so many uses for these. You can either uh, when you, for here's for example, when you insert a, enter a J box, you can twist wire so you can uh, position it in the way that you want. You can pull wire with a hook. Um, there's a part here where you can twist the wire for to make a hook to enter to the terminals. Another push feature here. The screwdriver that I like to use is this dub, uh, double switch blade. You can pretty much switch it up to either a flat head or a Phillips. And once you push it in, it locks in place. It's by Clean Tools. Um, yeah, you pretty much just twist it and it uh, releases and then you can push it in and it locks in place. Very nice, it is insulated grip. And I never work on electrical without using 
uh, voltage detector. This one's by Milwaukee. Again, I'll leave a similar product down below, but you, you won't, when you turn off the power from your breaker, you want to double check that there is no power going to that line. And this is just a reassurance and saves my life every time. So highly, highly recommend you get a voltage detector. Long nose pliers, wire cutters, and then you're going to need a utility knife to cut um, off those insulated wiring. Okay, those cables. We're, I'm not going to show you how to use this today, but if you need to, to feed wire through studs, through your ceiling, through your um, basement. I like using this fish tape. Again, you can use this to pretty much, you know, it's, it's a long piece of cable that you can use to help pull wire through studs and whatnot very easy to use all you got to do is take your cable wrap it around here tape it and then you can use that to pull this and fish it through your studs or your ceiling or your basement before i go tell you what wiring i'm going to be using today let's go over the j boxes first you can see there's there's three different types of j boxes they're pretty much all the same function this one's for new work you can see that because it has nails i didn't drive them all the way in because it's just a mock-up if you have old work which means that you have drywall already installed you can use this adjustable old work it's pretty much just screws into the studs from the inside another type of old work where this one right here you've seen this probably a lot where you can just locate this anywhere on the drywall and you can it pretty much just sandwiches to the drywall and yeah, you can position it anywhere. But let's get to the wire. The wire gauge that we're using today is a 14 gauge wire. So 14 gauge right here, 14.2. I'm going to mention 14.2 a lot, 14.3. When I say 14.2, it means that there's two wires and one ground. So that's one neutral, one hot, one ground. When I say 14.3, I, I mean by that is we're using three wire with ground that means there's a uh, hot black hot red and also a neutral white and one ground okay but they're all 14 gauges usually when you're working with light fixtures like so um, there you're gonna use a 14 gauge but you can use a 12 gauge as well again the power that we're that's coming from here is gonna be a 15 amp it's coming from a 15 amp breaker or whichever 15 amp power source that you're using. We're using 15 amp switches. You can use 12 to wire if you're if it's coming from a 20 amp breaker. Okay. You can't you can't use a 14 gauge wire like these on coming from a 20 amp. It's just not safe. It's gonna heat up your wiring. If you are gonna be using a 15 amp breaker, you can use a 12 2 wire which is a 12 gauge okay so i know that might sound confusing i'll leave a chart right here for you go pause the video so you know which wiring you can do but what i didn't state on this label is that you can use 12 2 on a 15 amp breaker okay you can always go up on size just not go down okay so just to be safe go 15 amp 14 gauge 20 amp 12 2 gauge okay so hopefully that makes sense. If you have any comments regarding wiring, please comment down below and I'll be glad to answer them. So I like to label the wiring so we don't get confused. Again, this is where gonna be our power source is and we're gonna be using a 14-2 wire with ground wire. This is coming from a 15 amp power source. We're gonna go through our first J box. This is where gonna be our first switch is located. Okay, and we're gonna leave about eight inches of free wire. So right when you feed that, we're gonna pretty much re uh, take out the insulation, okay? And then pull off the sheathing, black, neutral, and ground. This is gonna be where our three-way switch is gonna be. And then for our four-way switch, see this, there's three boxes. Your four-way switch is always going to be in the middle of the three-way switches. It's going to be three-way switches on each end and on the middle, whichever how many four-way switches. You can have as many four-way switches between the three-way switches. You always have your four-way switch between the three-way switches. The three-way switch 
to the four way, to the four way, to the three way, we're going to be using a 14 3 gauge wire. Let's start off with the switches. Now, with, when you're doing the switches, you always want a pigtail. When I mean by pigtail, you take a piece of the same gauge wire, about say six inches, and you're going to loop it and feed it onto whichever terminal that you wish. In this case, we're going to be going and putting it on the ground wire. So in all the switches, it's good practice to put your pigtails first before putting them on the J-Box so that you don't struggle later on and having, having all that trouble putting it. Just makes your job a little easier. It's a good practice. First, we're going to use our wire stripper and you're going to be uh, relieving about 5 eighths on each wire. Okay, so if you don't know what 5 eighths is, if you look on your three-way switch, there's actually a gauge uh, notch right there that you can use this as reference. Very easy to use. All you got to do is put your wire right, right up against that notch and you can see that that's the length of how much copper that you need to strip. This is going to be our power source. This wire is going to be coming going to the four-way switch. And this is actually what's going to make the loops. Feed it through about three quarter, three quarter of the way and then you just turn it. Now take your first three-way switch like what you see here and you see where the COM terminal is, COM, common terminal, the black terminal, and you're going to take the wire from your power source, the hot wire from your power source, and you're going to hook it to that black COM terminal. Okay, so when you're hooking something or when you're attaching this, you always want to go in a clockwise position. Make sure that you tighten this really well because you don't want these popping out of there. We're going to be going to the 14-3 wire going to the four-way switch. So on the red, okay, on the red, we're, I'm gonna be feeding it onto the, I'm gonna call this terminal, traveler terminal number one, travel terminal number two. Okay, the red one, I'm gonna be feeding it on traveler terminal number one first, like so. The hot wire from 14.3, and we're gonna feed that on traveler terminal number two. To make it easier, let's start with the grounds first. I'm gonna be using my Wago three-way lever. Okay, like so, open them up. To make it easier, let's start with the grounds first. I'm gonna be using my Wago three-way lever. Okay, like so, open them up. Now take all your ground wires. Now sometimes you have to take your ground wire and relocate them and refeed them in different directions. You don't want your ground wire going or your wires going in crisscross motions. Try to make it as neat as possible. Like so, all the grounds are connected. Okay, now we're gonna take controls, put them together. There you go. Quick recap, we have our 14-2 two wire with ground power source going to the first J box. The neutral of the power source is connected with the neutral of the 14.3 three wire with ground going to the second J box. The black wire, which is the hot wire from our power source, is going to the COM terminal of the three way switch, which is the black right there. Take all the ground from your power switch, the 14.3, the 14.2, connect them all together. Red and the black of the 14.3 going into here, which the black wire is going to traveler terminal number two on the right side. And then you have the red from the 14.3 going to travel ter traveler terminal number one on the left side. With that being said, let's go to uh, the box for our four way switch, which is going to be um, J box number two. And then just pull off the sheathing. Now moving on to our four way switch. Again, always make sure that it's on the top, top side up. The only wires that we're going to loop here is the hot and the red. Like so. So the red 14.3 is going to be going to the right side brass terminal. Black is going to be going to the left side of the four-way switch. Tighten that down. Let's put the neutral and the ground at the side at the moment. We're gonna feed 
a wire, a 14-3, three wire with ground, come, going to this box and going to our last switch, which is the three-way right here. Okay, like so. See, notice how all the red is just to make it uniform. I'm trying to make it all the red on one side, all the black on the other side. And the black of that is going on the top left. Okay. So notice, let me separate this so you can get a clearer picture. See this? The black and the red is from this wire right here going to the top, left and right. And then see this, this wire coming from the bottom is going to the bottom which is left and right there so you don't get confused and you can kind of see where the orientation is going and we're not all over the place i want to try to make this as neat and as organized as possible for you to understand so that first 14 3 3 wire with ground it's neutral is connected with the neutral on the 14 14 3 wire coming from our last three-way switch okay so combine those get all the ground wires out of the way so the ground wire from our switch ground wire from our 143 and our ground wire from our 143 are all connected together now we are going to be going and taking this 143 new wire feeding it now to our last j box for our next three-way switch to introduce our last switch which is the 143 so you have the two travelers and one common and you have the ground we got our pigtail already installed first let's do traveler terminal number two which is the black going on the right side we're gonna take our red and put it on traveler terminal number one Now for the neutral, we're, we're going to leave that open and we're going to leave the ground wires open because we are going to introduce our last 14-2 two wire with ground from the light switch fixture itself to this J box like so. This is going to be labeled 14-2 two wire with ground. The only one that we're going to be looping for the newly installed um, wire from this 14-2, we're only gonna be looping the black hot wire, okay? So the other wires are gonna be left to the side, and then we're gonna loop this one now to the common terminal right on the black. Let's get to all the easy wires now. We're gonna take all our ground wires in this box. Ground wire from the switch, ground wire from the 14-3, ground wire from the 14-2, and we are all going to connect that. So let's put that on the side. Lastly, we have all our neutral wires. This neutral wire is from our 14.3. And then neutral wire from the 14.2. Connect those. Like so. Okay. Easiest connection. Very straightforward. Just take all your neutrals. Okay. Connect them together. Take all your ground, connect them together, and then take your hot wire and then connect them together. Very straightforward. And let's do that right now. That pretty much completes the circuit. Let's do one final recap before we turn this and shove all those uh, switches back to their J boxes. Let's go to the final recap and let's break it down from the power is coming from a 15 amp power source whether it comes from a breaker or from another type of power source that you might have going to our first j box going to our first three-way switch okay the power source from that is pretty much the hot wire that's going to the comm terminal on the bottom and then you have our traveler wire from our 14.3 going from the second coming from the second j box that red wire is going to traveler terminal number one on the left. Black wire from that is coming from going to our traveler terminal number two on the right side top. And then we're taking all our neutral wires from 
that power source and from this 14.3, taking the neutral, putting them together, putting all the ground and hooking them all up together, pretty straightforward. Now we're moving up to the wire 14.3. We're gonna take our all our neutrals pretty much just to make it simple. Take all the neutrals from that 14.3 going to this J box, this 14.3 going there. Take the, all the neutrals, connect them. Take all the ground wires, connect them. And then our power source, or uh, then our 14.3 from our first lights uh, switch right there. The black wire is gonna be on the bottom. The red wire is gonna be on the bottom right. Okay, and then you have our 14.3. The red's gonna be on the top. Red, red, all on the same side. And the black is gonna be on the top left. Black on the same side. Okay, straightforward. All right, let's move on to the line, 14.3. Our last three-way switch right here. Okay, we're mimicking what the the wiring we did here so the red was on the left the black is on the right on that four on that three-way switch the red is on the left the black is on the right on the traveler terminals okay and then on their 14-2 last wire going to the light fixture itself that black wire from that cable is going to the comm terminal on the bottom of the three-way switch take all your ground put it together Take all your neutrals, put them together. And on the last one for our light fixture, white, black, ground. Okay, notice how this neutral wire is just connected all, you know, together on this circuit. It is not going to any switches. It is a floating connecting neutral wire all throughout. Okay, so that completes that loop. All right. If you have any questions as of now, leave it in the comment section. I'm going to shove this all in, turn on the power, and let's see how these light switches work, okay? You can see that there is power now feeding through this line. Now let's turn off the first switch. Let's say that we're entering the room on one side of the door. Light turns on, okay? Let's say that we're, another person was coming in and they want to turn it off on the other side. Another one's coming in from the other side, okay? You can see that you can pretty much mix, match, whatever way you're going. Either way you turn, flip the switch, they turn on and off, and this is for different entrances. So you can turn it on and off whichever way you want. Now again, if there's many entrances that you have and you wanna put more than one switch or more than three switches, you can always add more four-way switches in between the three-way switches. So once again, friends, that's how you are a four-way switch. It's not that hard. Again, if you follow this example or you follow this instructions, you won't go wrong. Again, working with electrical is very, very dangerous, so be very careful. If you are um, un uncertain on how to do this and you're kind of on the edge, please hire a professional certified electrician hope you found big value to this video if you did please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe and notification bell and i'll see you on the upcoming videos thank you so much have a good day